Welcome back to the channel, baby. So we have a third ride of today. Guess which one? Probably thanks to the <laughs> thanks to the title. You know we're gonna have a Super Adventure 1290S or 1290 Super Adventure S or 1290 Super Adventure. <laughs> So we're gonna have the biggest and the strongest bike here, uh, other than the Super Duke, right? So we're gonna be adventuring again, thankfully. So I'm gonna put my hands on this um, magnificent and strongly looking bike. Really big, obviously, on the first sight. Uh, we're gonna talk about it a little bit more later on, but let's hop on. <laughs> Woo! So, hopefully I'm recording. Oh shit! Brakes are fine. <laughs> so welcome back to another ride on the KTM days. We have a 1290 Super Adventure below us. And I'm really looking forward to this, oh my god. So if you haven't seen the Super Duke for one year ago, you can check it on my channel. This is the same engine, but in a different configuration. Obviously we have some hill assist, because the bike wasn't moving. So first of all, I'm surprised, because if you sit on Africa or if you sit on GS you can have a feeling out of the motorcycle that you are sitting really really high, like it's really tall and it's really big and, and kind of like a really, you know, fluffy, <laughs> majestic. On the other hand, this really feels smaller and you don't you don't have that kind of like intimidating feel out of the motorcycle it's it is bulky it it looks really tall and, and wide but once you are sitting on it you don't have that feel so i'm i don't feel intimidated i don't feel like oh my god this is such a big bike it's actually you know let's say i don't know medium bigger than you know most of the naked star motorcycles but it's not like scare big so we are sitting on the s version which has different type of the wheels uh king julian is on our model so we can you know stick them bus side by side and and then compare it a little bit once we catch him up uh feels a little stiff for the you know road riding but um, we have semi semi active suspension there's a lot of electronic things on it so we'll get we'll get back to it once we're gonna have a little bit more time to talk about it but it's fitted with such an extent of electronic helps uh, the rear view mirrors are awesome like I see a lot in, in you know in the back so I'm glad about that. We have a crap of each exhaust. So you can hear the bike for sure. Like it's not quiet. Oh my god. Doesn't feel that bad. Like it feels maneuverable. It feels stable. Really stable. Really good feel. Um, sitting position right here in the city really comfortable position my hands are higher than I anticipated but it's not bad uh, for now I'm not sure about long tra traveling like if I'm going to be going f you know further and further if my hands are going to be tired but it's pretty high for me 
um, sitting position regarding the legs really relaxed really focused on traveling the seat feels nice like, I don't have any objections right now nicely located to turn signal oh that the quick shifter is awesome I love the KTM quick shifters like I gotta say it's one of the best <laughs> got it on the main stand <laughs> okay so let me point out a couple of things right now so we have um brembo setup in the front double disc setup double calipers brembo brembo calipers you have brembo brake master cylinder you have um, LED lights, uh, WP Apex semi-active suspension, so it's electronically adjusted according to the mode which you have chosen. You have the classic spoke wheels, 17 in the front, 17 in the back as far as I believe. Uh, you have these grippy, uh, grippy packs, you can I believe take out these inserts to have be just on these very very grippy steel ones for your adventure boots also very grippy brake and the shifter seven seven inches tft display with you know a lot of bows and a lot of adjustments you have 12 watt 12 uh, volt socket a uh, lot of setups here on on the grips uh, with the buttons you have uh, adaptive cruise control ladies and gentlemen so here there is a radar so this is adaptive cruise control we're gonna test it but it should be aiming at the car in front and measuring the distance and adjusting the speed to still keep the safe distance between you and the car in the front so as you have in the cars it is integrated into 1290 super adventurous so never seen that previously on a bike never tested it so really looking forward to that to see how it works then you have uh, 1290 uh, v two engine which is actually 1301 cc engine 75 degrees for two cylinder engine uh, putting out 160 horsepower and putting out 138 newton meters of torque as far as i remember also electronic suspension in the back wp a krapovich exhaust uh, self-canceling turn signals uh, Bluetooth connectivity um, uh, keyless ignition and shitloads of electronics with a uh, 6D uh, control unit with traction control a cornering ABS you know there's like so many things so yeah let me just put it down from the how do I like <laughs> Yeah, you go. It will. Let's do it. Yeah. That was easier. <laughs> nice. Ooh, ready to race. So let me hop on in adventure style. Uh. Not that hard to pick it up though. About 230 kilograms, I believe. So you have um, bike info, like, you know, front and rear uh, uh, pressure. So you have the pressure information, temperature range. If you go back, you have trip information. If you go below, you have motorcycle, rider mode, street, sport, rain, off-road and rally. Thank you very much. Road, off-road and road that's uh, for the abs mode and traction control on and off so we'll for sure keep it in on for now rider mode is street let's put it in sport mode let's hit back uh, then you have the suspension mode automatic sport street comfort off-road advanced 
and then you have preload adjusters, anti-dive, foric shock, like, oh my god, let's just go to the auto, because, you know, <sighs> wow. Um, then you have cruise control mode, CC and ACC, so this is adaptive cruise control, very short, short, middle, and long, and very long, oh, so there's five settings for the uh, adaptive cruise control, so we'll go with middle, we'll see how it goes, and then you have connectivity, custom settings, you know, it's, it's a lot of things there, so, mate, highway! 138 newton meters, 160 horsepower. This is not a slow bike. Like, you will just tear apart the pavement underneath you. Like, this is ripping. The quick shifter is really nice and smooth. Like, I love this. is very jerky but shouldn't be surprised about that a little bit of vibrations at the 5000 we'll see how it copes with the highway speed with the traveling so if we are going to travel let me just put it into the um, into the street mode I really like the 7 inches of TFT display so wind protection on Super Adventure with a screen like this, which is really, really tall. Um, it's hitting me right to my top of the visor and top of the helmet. So here from, from top of my helmet below, I don't really feel a wind, uh, really. It's hitting me into my elbows and my shoulders. We have a car in front of us. So, I'm riding with the cruise control now. I have a car in front of me and it's set it up to 116. It's still keeping the fair distance from the car. There's a car indication right here. If I go to set it up to keep closer uh, closer distance let's say short to very short let's go back I don't know it doesn't do anything maybe I've done something wrong not sure maybe I have to be really really close Okay, so I have a car in front of me. Oh, it breaks itself. It breaks itself to maintain the distance. So right now, it, it set it up for 140, but it is checking the car in front. So if I change the distance and I go to different car, it will just speed up. Oh, interesting. Works well, fine, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. So we have bumps here. Let's see how it copes with bumps. We have it on street and we have it on automatic suspension. The bump coming up. Ow. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't comfortable. <laughs> really. I was expecting to have a, you know, a little bit less bumpy ride, but it's it's stiff but maybe just due to the you know street mode so you have such a so many settings here but i gotta tell you like the power is like really oh my god power is so much there like this is so powerful bike like for overtaking I don't know the 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 truck or overtaking some lo slower cars in some twisties or some mountains like I have full full trust 
into this bike. So I was a little bit faster than I was supposed to, probably, because... Right. So I'll be riding like this. I have quick shifter, so I'm fine. Okay, so far my impressions actually, um, as I said, it's not that bulky as you would expect. So I'm I'm not scared to ride it. On Africa, I wasn't really feeling myself. Triumph Tiger. That was actually the biggest bike I ever ridden, like tallest one that I ever ridden, because Indian Chieftain was for sure the biggest one. So both of us setting up the motorcycles to be able to go through the this short off-road stuff. Anti-dive, yes. Okay, uh, no function available. Oh, so if you go like, like high, oh, there's, there's 100%, it's going up. Oh, that's why it's, it's so short, because it's like 0%, now I'm tippy -toe. now I'm tippy -toeing. I could flat foot. Now I'm tippy -toeing. That's why it was such an easy ride, because you can adjust it. <laughs> is it easier than the bike before I'd say yes this is less jerky so I have a better feel With my knee sliders. Still kind of feel heavy. He's not holding back. He he's he he has done this multiple times.
should I even use the front brake? Like, I don't know. I don't even know basics of the off-roading, man. Should I? Can I? I don't know. Is it comfy right? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was hoping it will be a little bit more... Comfortable, maybe? Ow! <laughs> okay, my head, my legs are suspension, so So, what do I say uh, for the off-road riding? Um, as I told you in the previous episodes, I'm not an off-road rider. Um, I'm a track rider. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm dragging a knee, dragging an elbow, um, falling down currently. But the off-roading is not my strong side. So I'll, this is like the second time I've ever been off-roading, I'd say. I don't know if that is even called off-roading, but for me it is, because I've never done anything like that previously in my life, just in the morning on different bike. So this is the third bike of today, um, having a lot of fun on this. Um, I, I really like this, and I thought, and I figured out why it is such easy bike to you know to ride it's ktm 